my friends, Wolf Tiger here. Starting today, I'm beginning a series where I take a look at titles that have somehow slipped through my fingers in the past and give them a second chance. While they might not be the latest thing to come around, they're at least worth a look. So let's get started on the initial episode of Worth a Look. Just like a lot of other PC gamers out there in the late 80s and 90s, I was a huge point and click adventure game fan. Interacting with the environment and figuring out puzzles along the way was very appealing to me. They were great soothing games. That is, until the early and mid 90s craze hit. At that point, it seemed like everybody had a point and click game. And trying to stand out, developers were trying new ideas and thinking outside the box to get customers' attention. Like full motion video. Yes, I happen to love those kind of point and click games. To this day, you can still catch me thinking about or even playing The Seventh Guest, Phantasmagoria, or Gabriel Knight The Beast Within. All three of those titles have a special place in my heart, both for their styles, their puzzles, and of course, what makes a great point and click truly stand out, the story. So it should come to no surprise at all that The Beast Within is my favorite point and click title of all time. It's great story, interesting characters, and quirky sense of humor always seem to draw me into the world of this private detective. I always knew that there were other games in the series, I just never had a chance to play them. At least not until now. Several months ago, I saw something that got me excited. A Gabriel Knight sale on GOG. And there was a sequel, just begging to be purchased. So I bought it, and now it's time to take a look. So let's take a look at Gabriel Knight, Blood of the Sacred, Blood of the Damned. One thing that you're going to notice from the beginning is the graphics are really interesting. Bad textures and janky polygons. I had to do a double take and make sure that this was indeed the sequel. Yup, it's definitely Gabriel Knight 3. So what happened here? And that's when it hit me. This was in the midst of the 3D revolution as they called it. No matter how bad your textures were, or how few polygons that you used, if it was possible, your game just had to be 3D. And just like the previous title, the developers wanted to be in the latest trend. But I can accept that, it's alright. After all, it's not the graphics to make a great point and click game. So let's take a look at our beloved hero. Is that really you, Gabriel? What happened to you? You let yourself go. This is not how I remember you. What happened to your face? To your voice? And what's with that ridiculous over-the-top accent? Gabe, speak to me. You can't be serious. Oh, you are? I'm already carrying it. <sighs> this is bad. Poor Gabriel. Seriously though, all joking aside, once you get past the janky graphics, and the artist formerly known as Gabriel Knight, what you are left with is quite an enjoyable point and click adventure. Much like his predecessors, Blood follows Gabriel as he investigates a supernatural case for a client. And the further that he goes in, the more that the smart mouth detective finds himself personally involved and in harm's way. And that's even before his assistant and possible love interest, Grace, comes onto the scene. All in all, if you enjoy a good mystery, point and click adventure games, and some rather cheesy and corny humor, this game should really be up your alley. Sure, it's not much to look at, and boy is that accent over the top, but it's still deeply involving and a lot of fun. So, all in all, I would say that Gabriel Knight 3 is definitely worth a look. But don't take my word for it, try it for yourself. As always, happy gaming. That's all for now. Peace out.